Hello, my name is Ray Crampton. I'm the Operations Director of Commercial Marine Group. And I'm waiting for the screen to show up. Oh, Commercial Marine Group. Underwater civil construction. That's what we do. What does that mean? Um, basically, we go underwater. Uh, typically, the type of work that we get involved in would relate to bespoke or complex structures, um, fixing pipelines, concrete breakout. Uh, we even do underwater welding or cutting of steel piles. Um, this is not a sales pitch, but it sort of just explains what we do. We also have some specialised tools like underwater hull cleaning equipment and bigger boats for uh, offshore projects. But power remediation is what we really do and a bit of dancing underwater. Uh, anyway, today we're presenting two case studies. First one is um, about Toll Berth 4 in Burnie. It's a structure that was built uh, in 1910 to 1913. Uh, big wharf this is. Anyway, precast concrete blocks laid in situ underwater. Well, above water really, but they went underwater. Um, basically, the Toll Berth has been growing and growing and it's most definitely Tasmania's biggest port. Um, over the years the ships got upgraded and upgrades mean deeper drafts and bigger engines which created wolf scour um, and big cavities under the precast concrete blocks. Uh, cavities that caused a problem. So uh, we had a pretty cool client on this project, um, McConnell Dow. They hired us to go underwater and inspect these cavities and we found big holes which were problems and problems meant we needed to come up with some solutions. Solutions and solutions also presented with some challenges. Anyway, that's pretty much the story of what we do. Problems, solutions and challenges. The second project we're going to be presenting today is a more local back home in Brisbane. Um, the BP Port North Pipeline, which is basically a pipeline that goes to Brisbane Airport. Timber piles like termites, and we call them borers, and they kind of got underneath the concrete and ate away all the timber, which was a problem. Could you imagine fuel in the water? Uh, anyway, break out the concrete and fix the pile. So that's the second case study. And just for good measure, we'll throw in a pretty picture or animation of a scour diagram and how water flow, or what the engineers call hydraulics thingy. Anyway, uh, and to get this case study going, I'd like to present to you the host for today, presenting Mr. Ray Crampton. Thank you, and uh, hello, Mr. Ray. Thanks, Lewis, from the side of design. Um, I'm presenting two case studies, as you're aware. Um, we use 3D animation to present um, case studies and technical papers to our clients, um, particularly because we operate in very complex environments underwater, and often it's difficult to appreciate um, conceptually what types of what solutions uh, may be affected underwater and how they get delivered. So um, through that we've come up with 3D animation and uh, Lewis has kicked off already. Pause it there, Lewis. <laughs> um, animation works well with concept design to clients, engineers, to asset owners, and also when presenting that construction process to your colleagues, to the subcontractors, and to the workforce. So I'm going to present the two case studies, uh, starting with Burning Birth 4 in Tasmania. Um, and then I'll move on to the, the pipeline project. Moving on to the next project, I'll talk about um, UGL, which is a uh, scoop of the work. Uh, UGL has been the Weasel Principal Contractor on the BP Port North uh, pipeline that runs from Bulwa Island uh, over to uh, Port North Common User Berth. Uh, this pipeline was built in uh, 1950s. Quite on that. Um, basically, um, back in the day, BP had a refinery. Um, this is travelling south here. Um, sea conditions are really like that, but um, we can do some crazy things with animation. 
Um, that makes it quite thing to work very hard. Um, 250 piles, uh, all timber. Um, so the pipeline is about 70 years old. Uh, typically in the Brisbane River, timber gets affected uh, with borers. So in the 70s, they installed uh, uh, cast in situ um, concrete around these piles. Um, many other structures in the Brisbane River present with um, these pre cast pipes that just drop over. Anyway, um, the uh, piles are affected by borers uh, quite significantly. Um, so, scope of work for us remove the uh, pre cast concrete, so the, the, the cast in situ concrete um, around the piles to expose the timber and to measure uh, minimum and maximum diameters. Um, circumferences and then couple of diameters. That's presented to our engineers at uh, FSA Consulting and uh, they specialise in, in this sort of work. Um, uh, they calculate uh, design loads for minimum, minimum thicknesses to determine whether it's uh, a you know, suitable um, pile for uh, durability or a structural remediation. Uh, fortunately, predominant repairs are struck by of durability, which means they, they less than, so greater than 250 mm diameter. Uh, there's a pile that's uh, obviously in really poor condition. Um, it doesn't actually show the narrowest section. That pile drops down to about 110 mm diameter. So that's really bad. Um, this pipeline obviously carries fuel. So if uh, there's a failure on any of those piles and the pipe breaks, well, there's a big problem. Um, so how do we remediate piles? And um, this is a good question. Um, a lot of our clients don't quite understand what the process is. So Lewis created this design. It's called the pile remediation process. Um, typically, demo saw, uh, hydraulic or, uh, or uh, petrol on the surface, hydraulic and water, um, break away the concrete and, and expose the timber. Uh, high pressure water blast, just to, to clean up uh, marine growth, uh, take away dead timber, and expose um, the circumferences. We then also do expose about half a metre to a metre below the pile, subsea bed, because that's typically the place where you're going to find most of the damage. Uh, once that's done, uh, the client decides on the real solution. In this case, it's a structural solution. So uh, structural means uh, installation of FRP rods. Uh, those are spaces, any of the spaces, and then we have the FRP rods that get installed. Um, and then the jacket, in, or the pile is then wrapped in a uh, FRP solution. In this case, a proprietary product called uh, Polymetic Bake Wrap was specified, uh, and that's a 720 degree wrap. Um, from an installation perspective, certainly, you know, we have a lot of exposure to use this product. It works well from a logistical perspective on site. It goes on quickly. Um, no problem with cranes and heavy rigging. Um, and um, it's got a I've seen project for the 75 years old. So it's, um, it's a beautiful product. Um, we then install an epoxy uh, to the base of the pile. And that effect creates a, a plug, but also uh, bonds the jacket to the the timber pile. A cementitious grout um, falls the annulus. Um, uh, yeah, we've predominantly used uh, the park end product, the, the UW Convextra, and that's come from one of our barges, uh, mixed by the guys, and then epoxy on the surface just to, to uh, seal it off on the top, and that's tapered up nicely. And then um, we paint it with UV stable paint. Uh, the new product that I believe they have has uh, UV properties already, so there's no paint is required. Um, challenges on this site, um, well, 250 piles um, have been uh, tidal flow. Um, it's in an area in the Brisbane River that, that does present with up to a couple of knots. So having a diver in the water, trying to drill and clean and break, um, can be quite challenging. Um, this uh, image here represents the entire structure. The, the red dots represents the durability and the green ones the um, structural. 
um, and then some few statistics on what we've done and what's yet to go. Um, depth of water from zero metres or rather half a metre above the water, the sand down to uh, nine metres. Um, uh, this is probably the inception of um, the site and design of the animation process. Um, we're trying to explain to, to UGL, our, our client, Atom, uh, UGL's client, and then BP, which is the ultimate asset owner, um, you know, they've awarded us this contract and uh, trying to explain you know, how we deliver a project and what challenges we have in trying to deliver the project can be, can be challenging. So we incepted uh, animation, or the animation side of business to um, explain the processes. And um, I've found that through diagnosing a structure, you know, before it even goes to, to uh, design phase, it's quite helpful looking at animation to, to present you know, the, the problems to, to engineers and asset owners. Um, we got through a great wrap up for me. I just wanted to uh, say thanks again to Lewis. Um, and hope I covered everything with problems, solutions, and challenges. Thank you, Scott. Thank you.